So Miamisburg has created a new riverfront area that they've imagined to happen for the last 20 years. I believe it's completely finished. Maybe a couple of little bits and bobs, but Friday, five days from now, will be the grand opening. Ribbon cutting, if you will. If I see plenty of people there. So let's check it out. So one of the first noticeable things is the additional parking here. I'm not sure if you can tell where the blacktop ends, but that used to be the old road that went down and connected. The bathroom seems to have expanded. Hopefully it'll be open more often than it was before. It appears there's some electronic vehicle charging stations over there. In the parking area, appears to be four of them. I'm sure some people will appreciate that. A new covered picnic area. Huge play area for the kids. It's multiple types of items. They have a bunch of tools to help people down there hanging. Bike repair. What we got here? And as you can see, Minesburg, Ohio, the only city in the world with the name. Named after the Miami Indians that used to live in this area. Okay, so. Still have some sprinkler systems adjustments, it appears, for the grass. A massive play area with different items. Appears to be fun for the young ones. Like I said the covered picnic tables are great. Then they have some swings out here overlooking the uh, water. Looks like the middle one's open. I'm going to try to get in it. So, oh look at that, nice, bunch of fun items. Over there is the previous water sprinkler, probably be turned on in June or after the end of May. Now oh, let's check out this middle swing. Okay, so this swing, super good comfortable, smooth. Looks super sturdy. Sitting by the river. I can see this being very comfortable. So there's additional swings down there we'll walk and here's a huge change. They've graded it in such a way that it is up to the levee before where the bike path was. And the only way normally down used to be by a couple steep ladders from the levee going down. 
but now a slight grade so you can walk up and down to it excellent the amount of open grass and lawn is is beautiful in fact the place looks awesome absolutely awesome let's walk some more Yeah, it's still, they have the gardens going. That should be beautiful later on. I mean, more so now. They have to sign the 20 years. How long they've been working on getting this to be a design or something like this. And I think it's a great job. Uh, let's continue on. Like I said, I have an area down here with another swing. The entire area has been separated. We're getting ready to come up to where they'll have concerts. And from this angle, you don't even see the in-ground seating. That's amazing. But we'll get a closer look. Like I say, the way they have done this is amazing. Look at that little art over there. The wonders of the ginkgo tree. So they've added some parking further down. And that has a... Uh, been there for a while look at this so here's the stage and still the seating is hidden look at that well done plenty of different levels you can sit here on the stone people will be bringing their chairs obviously and you basically got a whole lot of area here to sit on and a whole lot of uh, stuff to watch. They're still getting some sound systems ready. What is this one? Look at this. Be your own hero today from the city of Mimesburg. I'm Deborah, made from a wind turbine blade. Huh. Interesting. Let's see. Pretty sure it's stationary. It is. Uh, but, but nice and sturdy. So, yeah, all the way down here. So, additional parking there. Plenty of parking there. A lot more parking down at the other end of the road. It'll help. We have concerts and stuff here. So, it's nice. It's four levels of tiered seating. So, a lot more people can be together. They're surrounding the stage. And they're up on different levels. That can help. And for those that did not bring a chair or don't have one or just want to stop them for a minute. If they're lucky enough to get this one chair, doubt it. But they got seats right there. Awesome. I think it's a fabulous job. Like I said, the grand opening is in five days. But there'll be a ton of people, ribbon cutting and all that. So it's kind of enjoyable to come get a look at the finished product. I've watched it along the way. I never really recorded it much, Joe, but 
it's been an amazing transformation and nothing but praise for this it's awesome okay looking along you can see the path used to go kind of straight and continue on with the back the bike path this way and they have graded it down some for sure all right actually let's walk this way walk down I'm wondering what that thing is down there. Oh, I think it's a bench. Huh. Yes, it's something. Our citizens and visitors, if they love if a thing loves, it is infinite. I'm Faye, made from a wind turbine blade. Huh, interesting. I don't know what that is down there. If it's permanent or temp. There you go. You can see the grading and angling more down here. Excellent. We have a... The new background area from Bullwinkles. It's excellent. Had it for a year or two. Oh, here's another one of the benches from a turbine. Okay. And right next door, the American Legion is building a extra patio area as well. Covered looks nice. We'll see what it looks like later. So a lot easier walking around before the grand opening on next Friday. Be a lot more people. Be fun. My opinion, of course, is they did an excellent job here. A ton of open space. I mean, you got places, you can sit over here with your chair if you just want to catch some music from the stage. You don't have to be right up next to it. There's so much open area to use. And this will be for carnivals and festivals and other stuff that comes along. Spring Fling will be coming up. So that'll be an excellent use of it. We'll see how it goes. I anticipate great things. Of course, that's what Dick Church always used to say, the former mayor. Great things are happening in Miamisburg. Just remembering the area like I remember the greats and how it transitioned up to different stuff and now we have this was the road now it's nice sidewalk nice incorporations to the different levels let's see I don't want to walk the whole thing around let's cross over let's see if they changed the entryway up here don't think so but we'll see Looks like this splash pad has had a facelift already. I don't, kind, I don't really remember the blue and yellow. Not sure. But the structure and stuff they need to run, the vegetation around it, the plantings, looks great. It 
it's all fun and games unless someone actually turns it on but to be fair I don't think it's able to come on till the end of May or you know somewhere like there I think they keep a set time not sure though so yeah the benches they're the same this was an entrance way they had for a long time marking the new area that they've been wanting to work on that was the market square building for many years and multi-purpose use building for decades so now i think it holds various shops the uh, historical society was there for a while but they have moved to the old library we'll have to check out sometime This is what the roads used to look like down in Miamisburg when I was growing up. It's back in the 60s and 70s. It was all open brick like this. It's very old. They spent a lot of money on it and it lasted forever. So people are going to make great use of the picnic tables. I can see them grabbing food downtown, different places, just bringing it over here and enjoying. So this building has a new name. It used to be the BB Riverfront. Something for many, many years. Star City Social. Event and Gathering Hall. Okay, so we continue. The bikes are enjoying much easier for them to transition down in order to also go downtown Mimesburg. So things to see but we're gonna save that for another day. We're just walking around here today. We'll walk around downtown later. So this oh appears to be AstroTurf. Nice. That should last for a long time with the kids. So you can run over it without uh, damaging. So the material. Is also the spongy stuff that will help protect them from falling and stuff. So it's good to go. And one thing about Mimesburg, you can't see it, but on the other side, always have trains. Always. So lots of extra seating for the kids. Oh, they actually have a ping pong table. Imagine that. Nice. Unexpected. Ah, another bench. Uh, EV charging. I don't know nothing about it. I'm sure you have to pay. Electricity comes from something. Oh yeah, that your charge card. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, it seems like they're doing work in between. It's not even an alley. It's just a causeway between the two buildings here. One on the ice cream movie theater. And then this has been multi-use over the years. Let's see what the signs say. I know I thought I wasn't going to go, but yeah. We'll see what's over here. Huh? Oh, nice old boy. Okay. They're going to town here. Look at this. Oh, it's walkways, maintain, manage. Okay, so they're starting a project. Nice. Mm 
Nice. Yeah. How you doing? Huh. Working. Let's go. So look forward to seeing this when it's done. Awesome. Pretty good. So we have a new design getting ready to be painted here. Wow, he's been working on it. The artist is over there. Look forward to seeing it complete. It's on the same building, i.e. the, the uh, movie theater. That's the Mumsburg postage stamp. And on the other side, some of the legends of the screen. In fact, let's go check that out. And around here, legends of the screen, or forever legends, Erica Arntz, she does a lot of stuff all over. She did a great job. Hard to pull it in screen. Her in frame, I mean, in screen. There's more down there, too. Like I said, we're going to hold off on this as I walked over here. All right. Well, there's the first look at downtown Mimesburg, the uh, riverfront area. Hey, welcome to the uh, Riverfront Park ribbon cutting. Wow, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Ginkgo stage. Welcome to Miamisburg's finally completed Riverfront Park. <laughs> Honestly, I can't tell you how humbling it is to sit here as the mayor of Miamisburg and look out over this park and to have had the opportunity to watch it every day when I went to work in the morning. It has been a collaboration that a lot of people are going to talk about and they're going to be accurate on their numbers and I won't. So <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you all for being here. This truly is a dedication of a park. It's a celebration, but it's a dedication to the commitment that Miamisburg, the residents of Miamisburg, the business owners up and down Water Street. We had a vision for this park. It was told to the merchants that this vision was gonna happen. Everyone invested up and down the road. Everyone who comes to this park is gonna have a great place to stop, eat, socialize, grab some ice cream, ride a bike. There's, there's not anything you can't really do in this park that's legal anyway <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyways if someone tells you my name is for can't throw a party remind them of this night okay <laughs> this is our party and I'm proud to be standing here um, we're gonna hear of a long list of donors who helped this park happen the biggest thing I have to say is I have to recognize Miamisburg City Council because, but for them not dedicating the money last year to finally complete this park, 
make it done, make it usable, we wouldn't be here right now. So it is their dedication behind it. And um, the I told myself I wasn't gonna get emotional at this opening. <laughs> the financial commitment of our, just all staff, um, they've buckled down, they've saved money, they've done what it takes to bring amenities to our citizens here in town. And um, we have to appreciate them for them and recognize them for it. So, yeah, please, give them a big round of applause. Like Wilma's in the audience somewhere. Councilman Mike McCabe is here with his wife, Peggy. Councilman Ryan Colvin is here with Stacy and both his children, grown-ups. They're not children anymore, are they, Ryan? <laughs> Vice Mayor Stephen Beefler is here. Councilman John Stalber, President of the Miami Valley Fire District is here with his wife, Sue. I can't ever leave out Councilman Jeff Nestor, and I know Jenny, his wife, is here. Councilwoman Sarah Thacker is here with her lovely daughter and her husband, Alan. Out in the audience somewhere is State Rep Tom Young. Where are you, Tom? There you are. And State Representative Rodney Creech is here. There he is. You know him. Give a weed an inch, it'll tank your yard. That's him. You can blame him for that ever being in your head. <laughs> so I'm going to let a lot um, smarter, um, more, I don't know, fluent people talk. There's, there's one thing that I have to cover, and um, the one person who was instrumental in this park being here is my very good friend Dick Church, and our former mayor... <laughs> Our former mayor dedicated a large part of his career to making sure this park was here and um, in the planning of it and the institution, it, it, uh, earmarking money for it and tearing down houses for it. And Dr. Judy Church, I, you're gonna make me cry, but I'm so glad that you're here representing him. I know you are his biggest fan, so thank you. Somewhere in the park is a Mayor Church and Dr. Judy Church bench. I encourage you to find it, get your photo taken on it. Um, it will be a memory to keep. So, Mayor Church, thank you. I know he's here and we love you. And so now, I'm gonna introduce you to our city manager, Keith Johnson. He's here with his lovely wife, Julie. And he's gonna tell you a little bit more about the financing. Frank <laughs> Uh, my job is to talk a little bit about how we got here today. Uh, I was glad that uh, Michelle mentioned uh, Dick. Uh, Dick was, for those who worked with Dick, Dick was probably the downtown's largest cheerleader. Uh, I thought about him earlier today. Uh, I really thought it was going to rain tonight. But I remember Dick said, and I'm not sure what this means, Judy, but Dick said, if there are clouds over Hipple Hole, Right? We're due for rain. I, I'm assuming that Hipple Hole was cloudless. And it's over that way somewhere. But that's why we have such a beautiful evening. So, um, I come from this from a different perspective. Uh, I've been here, this is my uh, 30th year. So I've actually been here since the start of this whole process began. Um, you can't talk about this park without talking about the rebirth of the downtown because that's what this park was. Uh, 30 years ago, I came here uh, from Athens, Georgia as a young city planner and my job was to take a look at what we could do downtown. Uh, downtown back 30 years ago was about 80% vacant, uh, either vacant or underutilized buildings. And to give you an idea of that, if you took a stroll down Main Street tonight and you walk past the Eagles, you walk past the American Legion, and you walk past Bullwinkles. Those are the only three businesses or entities here today that were here 30 years ago. So it, it shows you how much happened. Uh, 
30 years ago, the businesses that we lost, and again, for a small town to lose any business, it's a killer, but we lost Sutman's Clothing Store, Sorrell's, I see Doug Sorrell is here tonight and he's joined us, Pop Jewelers, uh, Phil Hart Drugstore. Uh, we only had two restaurants downtown 30 years ago. One of them closed, TW's. And at one time, we're gonna hear from one of the banks here tonight, but we had three banks in Miami's Burger, two of those three closed. And what that meant really for the downtown was a loss of people. I mean, you look around at this crowd today, this is about a month's worth of business in my, downtown Miamisburg 30 years ago. And that's hard to believe, but that's what we were dealing with 30 years ago and trying to figure out what to do about the downtown. When you look at the businesses that we lost, there were then also the things that were happening downtown that aren't signs of a good, healthy downtown. We had a Salvation Army, a Mission of Mercy, uh, a WIC office, uh, we had two bars that the police spent an awful lot of time in late at night. And if you came down here on a Wednesday night trying to find a place to park, the bingo operation literally utilized every parking space that we had downtown. And more importantly, at least the consultants that we talked to, the problem we were having uh, was how do you connect to the river and the bikeway? And we're actually standing in an area right now that was the largest collection of dilapidated houses in South Dayton. And I know many of you remember that. A lot of you younger people, all you remember is a park. But in order to get to where we're at today, we had to address that issue. So we started with a series of plans, and really it took strong leadership to get us here. Uh, we talked about Mayor Church. We also had uh, John Weihoker, our city manager, and John made sure that we had the resources that we needed in order to do this. And we also had a very young Parks and Recreation Director, Becky Benet. Becky, raise your hand. <laughs> Many of you know Becky from Five Rivers, but Becky started here with us. In fact, I think we started about a month apart from each other. We worked for the city. But Becky brought this energy, and along with the vision that we were looking at doing. And the, the challenge we had is, how do you begin assembling all of this? These were 65 properties through here, which included apartments. We had a couple of commercial buildings. Uh, there were parking lots that were tied to some of the uses on Main Street. There was a closed church. You know, how do you deal with that? So we, we were able to identify a source of funds through the state of Ohio that netted about $2 million. Along with some city funds, we actually began talking to businesses. The very first properties that we bought, Becky oversaw that. And then when Becky moved on, it moved on to me. But we, for six years, one property at a time, began purchasing properties. We were able to negotiate with every one of the property owners, but it took us six years to pull that together. And then at the end of that, when we had it cleared, what are you gonna do with it? Well, we put a temporary stage, and some people thought that was intended to be permanent, but it was just a temporary stage. We put some trees and benches in and said, you know what, let's create a venue. And over the next decade, that venue grew to where we had about 85 events, and it wasn't even a park yet, downtown. So we began to see what we thought might happen, which is people were coming downtown with this. We also saw on Main Street, a number of people that took, you heard the mayor talk about that. These were pioneers in their own right. These people were putting their money in businesses with the promise that this vision is gonna happen. And the fact that you can walk down this roadway and see the backs of buildings that are fixed up and, and uh, decks to sit out and eat, they were put there with no park. But they knew it was coming. And those people deserve uh, as much credit as everyone else does because they took the chance to make sure that that happened. So <clears throat> I'd like to really kind of pass out some thank yous as we look forward to, and, and the rest of your agenda. The first thank you is to the property owners out here. At, at any group of them said no, this park wouldn't have happened. There were a lot of things that had to happen for, the, for us to be here tonight. The first step was being able to acquire all these properties and we were able to do that. Um, the second step was to get out of vision and uh, design. And we opened that up to the community and we were able to do that. So that, that first set of thank yous. The second is for the merchants who put their time and money and sweat to make sure that we had a venue for people to come down and shop and eat at 
or go catch a movie at. And all this stuff is tied together. It isn't anything that any one of us did. And working together, we all, all were able to do that. So uh, city council, these are the, the eight elected officials you have over the 30 years. We probably could double the seats up here from the other elected officials. I saw uh, Lisa's here tonight, a former council person. There were a lot of council people uh, that were dedicated. That this vision we developed had to be held. And uh, several years ago, we began looking at budgeting and how to do this. Um, I really want to recognize, in particular, Councilman Stalder. John had said, you know, we're really good at doing designs and doing plans. We need to finish some of these. And we all thought, well, at the time, you know, the park's pretty active, but it wasn't finished. So we sat down and working with the council over a couple of years, we were able to develop the funding for this. This is all, we're, uh, all this is cash flowed. Uh, some of it is, uh, a lot of it's donations, and you'll hear a little bit from the foundation next, but we did not borrow a nickel to build this. All this is cash, and this is our gift to you, and really your gift to us, because without you, this would not be possible tonight. So again, thank you for being here. This is a tremendous night and enjoy the rest of your evening. Myers, most of you know me as the president of Farmers Emergence Bank, but I'm also here tonight representing the Miamisburg Community Foundation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. It's an all-volunteer board, and it was really just established a few years ago. Um, but it's an avenue for people to do charitable giving to support projects downtown. It could be anything tied to recreation or the arts. Um, you'll see a lot of our past activity already around here, the dog park, a lot of these murals, and of course the park here today. Um, I want to take a moment to thank some of the significant donors so far for this park project. Um, our largest donors were the ones that sponsored different things as naming rights. Uh, the stage we're in right now is the Louise Epperson Foundation. Uh, there's a little sign over here that tells you about that. And um, we have Farmers and Merchants Bank as part of our 100th anniversary sponsored the playground. Thank you, have a few employees here. Uh, Spring Fest was sponsored our beautiful swings along the levee. And the Fink family, the pavilion down by the playground. We also have many other, what I'll call large sponsors from $5,000 to $50,000, and I'm just gonna go through those names real quick. Niels Winther and Think Patented. Greg Bell and Margaret Hurley, Bob Bell, Collins Real Estate, Bentley's Heating and Cooling, Miamisburg Eagles, Steve Divnick, Miamisburg Vision Care, Hoskett Hewlin Insurance, also known as Masters, the Church Family, Molly Williams, and Ted and Kathy Barlett. If you'd like to make a donation, thank you. Thank you to all the donors. <clears throat> If you'd like to make a donation to this park, or we're also looking for money for the Sycamore Trails Park Project, or just any general support of the foundation and the things we do around town, please feel free to contact us or go online to miamisburgcommunityfoundation.org. I know it's a lot of letters, but it's easy to remember. miamisburgcommunityfoundation.org. We still have several opportunities for this park and Sycamore Trails Park. Uh, if you go to that website, you can start with just a brick for $250 or $500. Um, you can sponsor a tree and have your name by it for $1,000 or one of the benches for $2,500. So again, uh, take the opportunity and it's really a great way for citizens or businesses to be a part of all these wonderful projects. So thank you all for being here. Hi there. My name is Ryan Davis. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director. I can promise you the credit for this project does not go to me. But my role tonight is to talk about the park and to thank all the people that helped make this happen. It's a really long list, and so instead of running down a list of names, I'd like to talk about it just a little bit differently. I think it's important to know that so many people have played a part in this project that it's inevitable that we're going to forget somebody or miss somebody. There's no intent with that at all. We appreciate everyone. But as I was thinking about what to say tonight, it occurred to me that this park is simply a reflection of Miamisburg, who we are and what we are. So if we can, let's take a minute, look around, take it in, look what we did together. 
This is what we have created. This is what we have all been a part of. And this is our community. Miamisburg is such a special place, but it's, I think it's important to talk about why it's so special. And as the park is a reflection of that, I thought I'd name a few. First, Miamisburg has a rich history and a dedicated citizenry to preserving and discussing that history. We say often that this project is 20 years in the making, 30 years in the making, but in fact, the ori origins of this park can be traced long before that. Local historian John Gorman wrote in a book about the impact of the 1913 flood. In that book, John writes about how the Miamisburg News, May 1st, 1913, wrote an article. In that article, the county commissioners, commissioners discussed plans for a new bridge as the previous one had been washed out. The concluding paragraph of that report stated, it's the thought that someday the bank of the river will be vacated and made into a park. It's suggested that the National Flood Commission will recommend this. In the park near the splash pad, there's a sign, you can see the historical marker that dedicates this park to the, based on the history of the 1913 flood. If you look up, you'll see markers that show the depth of the water back in 1913, right at that spot. Miamisburg is special because it understands and values connections. When we had our groundbreaking at the park, I talked about how this is not just a park, about how it's something bigger. Keith talked about how it's part of this downtown. The park and the downtown are symbiotic to one another. When the downtown thrives, the park thrives. When the park thrives, downtown thrives. This park is not meant to stand alone as a place to visit, but it's designed to be a part of the experience and visiting and enjoying all that downtown Miamisburg has to offer. When we designed the park, we knew it was crucial to allow residents and visitors to stay longer, visit more, and has to have a positive experience. We needed a place for young families to play, and so the playground was designed for this. The Farmers and Merchants Bank playground provides a dry space to play, while fam families can sit underneath the Fink Family Pavilion. If you're looking for some wetter entertainment, the Rotary Splash Pad is here for you as well. As we think about connections, it's the connection with the Miami Conservancy District that made this park a success. The, the ability to see right out over the Great Miami River provides a vantage point and, and a view that we have not seen in this community for over 100 years. It was intentional that the Springfest and the Berg levee overlooks are called just that, the levee overlooks, as opposed to the river overlooks. Because the connection to the Conservancy District, the builders and the caretakers of the levee is what make this park possible. Miamisburg is special because of its commitment. It was no easy task to, te to keep this dream alive. Special thanks, appreciation, and recognition are warranted to all the city staff, city council, and department staff, past and present. The previous Parks and Recreation Directors, Becky's getting a lot of praise tonight, Debbie McLaughlin, Kelsey Wick, the late Mayor Dick Church, and many council members who over the years have kept this dream alive amongst all the competing priorities and the needs of the community. It's also important to recognize the current city manager, Keith Johnson, Mayor Collins, and all the city council whose commitment to this project allowed us to build such an amazing venue. The commitment of our donors, large and small, who gave to be part of its future. The commitment of any citizen who has placed a sticker on a concept planning board many years ago. The commitment of our volunteers to this community, such as those on our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, our Citizens Urban Forestry Advisory Board, and all those whose advice, guidance, and input has kept us on this path all along the way. Miamisburg is special because it likes to celebrate. Events, there we go, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it says pause for effect, I forgot. <laughs> Events are a hallmark to summer in Miamisburg, from car shows to movie nights, concerts, and festivals. It's because of these events that the park features this permanent amphitheater with the high quality sound and lighting that it does. In just seven days, we will welcome home Springfest in the Burg, back to Riverfront Park. At that event, we will be able to experience the park to all of its potential. Added parking allows extra space for the carnival. The great lawn and green spaces will welcome visitors to explore local vendors at the Maker Mart. And the sounds of bands will grace this ginkgo stage all weekend long. Miamisburg is special because of its character and its charm. I heard a story just this past week about from a resident who had family from out of town. 
Their daughter was telling us, and he was re recanting this to me, how she was just awestruck. This place felt like it was from a movie. It was just such a special place. It has such character and charm. This park reflects that character and charm. Elements like murals, the Ginkgo mural by Erica Arnst, is a reflection of all of the other things that are here downtown. And our canvas benches. The circular bench at the top of the amphitheater and the benches around the park add character and play to this charm. These benches are actually made from a recycled wind turbines. Once they've served their time, <clears throat> turning wind energy into electricity, turbine blades are difficult to get rid of. And so we found a company up in Avon, Ohio that knows how to recycle these, and they turn them into these beautiful benches that add all of the character. <clears throat> it's important to point out <clears throat> that tonight, as a way to celebrate the evening, commemorate the grand opening of this park, We'd like to invite everyone, as the evening goes on, after we cut the ribbon, to be part of this and to put your fingerprint on this project. To my left, you'll see one of these benches made from a retired wind turbine. After we're done cutting the ribbon, you'll be able to sign our guest book, paint your hand, and put your hand on the bench. That will serve as a commemoration for your presence here tonight and your impact here on this project. And finally, Miamisburg is special because the people of Miamisburg care. The way in, the, in which this park reflects the care has been obvious from the beginning, no matter which beginning you choose to think about. From the business investing that we've talked about, where they've started taking their back doors and making them their front doors, to the people and families and individuals who have moved here because of the idea of what this park could become. The care of the people who chose to provide their time, their input, and their money towards, the, towards this project's success is a reflection of the care that people have for this community. To those that have worked on the project, they also have demonstrated care. From our amazing design team at the Kleinders Group and all the subcontractors, I'd like to point out uh, Kelly Flaherty and Steve Cordy with the Kleinders Group, they're here tonight. What they were able to do, let's give them a round of applause. They had to combine over 20 years of input, three different design co concepts, and countless ideas and recommendations into the beautiful space that we were able to enjoy tonight. Double J Construction to Ron, Lee, Kelly, and Corey, thank you for the work that your team has done in taking great care of our community and constructing this park. Double J Construction also built Water Street back before 2016 when that was just an alley. So their fingerprints are all over this park. Recognition is due to the Montgomery County Transportation Improvement District, to Vanessa, Mike, and Veronica. Your care for our park through this process has been incredible. The management and oversight that your team has provided has allowed city staff to focus on the experience of residents, visitors, and users. I'd like to give special kudos to Reese Electric, Stephen Marklin with Marklin Productions, for their hard work and effort in making the hundreds of connections for both the power as well as the sound and lights. Let's give Stephen a round of applause. He's down here in the front, turning me up and down. And is Chad here from Joe's Landscaping? So Chad deserves a special moment in the spotlight. It was only a few short weeks ago that we decided that planting grass seed was just not gonna work in this park, and we had to pivot, and so we added sod, literally four weeks ago. And what Chad and his team did was took care of our park. He worked long hours, drove their team all day, all night to get the sod in. And that is what has finished this park. So Chad, if you're here, we really appreciate you. Thank you. I'd also be remiss if I don't take some time to recognize the staff of the entire city of Miamisburg, the Public Works Department, Finance Department, Engineering Department, Development Department, City Manager's Office, and Human Resources. This truly has been a citywide project to get us where we are. Kevin McKinney, Aaron Stonecash, Kerry Harner, and Jared Colvin, with, and the entire Parks and Facilities team have done just an amazing job putting all of the finishing touches on this project. To Jen Brandt and Rachel Goforth and the entire Recreation and Special Events team, making tonight possible and planning all of our events throughout the season. We're so excited for what they have coming up. If we could, we have a lot of members of the Miamisburg Parks and Recreation team. If they could just raise their hands real quick. Can we please give them a round of applause?
when you think about caring for your community, these people go above and beyond every day to take care of this community. So as you can see, Miamisburg is a special place, and this, part, this park reflects that. It's special because everyone has had such a huge part in making this a possibility. Riverfront Park is our park. Riverfront Park is everyone's park. In a moment, we will do a ribbon cutting that involves every one of you. We're, we're gonna line you up, and everyone's gonna get a pair of scissors, and everyone's gonna get a piece of that ribbon to take home with them as a memento for their time here tonight. I'd like to summarize my comments tonight with some words that we have located on our donor sign that you can find in the middle of the park. It's titled, Rooted in Community, celebrating two, two decades of dedication and support. It is with heartfelt gratitude that we stand in awe of the journey that has led us to this moment. As the sun dances on the waters of the Great Miami River and shines across this beloved riverfront park, we reflect on the tireless efforts, the boundless generosity, and the unwavering dedication of all of those who have contributed to its transformation. To our esteemed donors, your generosity has been the cornerstone of this project. Your financial contributions have paved the way for new pathways, vibrant landscapes, inviting amenities, and an impressive community gathering space where memories are made and friendships will flourish. Your names grace this sign as a symbol of our deep appreciation for your belief in our vision and your commitment to our community's well-being. Yet our gratitude extends far beyond these words and names. For over two decades, our community has come together, united by a shared dream of a park that would inspire, rejuvenate, and connect us all. From the early brainstorming sessions to the final ribbon cutting tonight, your ideas, input, and support have been vital and your contributions have left an enduring mark on this project. As we celebrate the completion of Riverfront Park Improvement Project, we, de we do so with deep humility and a profound appreciation for each and every one of you who has played a part in this journey. May this park stand as a testament to the power of community, the beauty of collaboration, and the boundless potential of our shared dreams. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Welcome to Riverfront Park. We cannot wait for you to enjoy it. Morning, and I guarantee you, if his hair wasn't so short, it would be as white as mine. Because I know <laughs> um, the anxious moments he's had, along with all the staff. And we have the most dedicated staff at the city of Miamisburg. No matter who they are, all they want to do is make sure things are right in Miamisburg and that they're doing the best job for the citizens, and they are doing it. So please appreciate them when you see them. They all got a shirt on, they all got a logo on, say hi to them and, and thank them for what they've done here. So let's cut a ribbon. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jen Brandt. I'm the Recreation and Special Events Superintendent. We are so stoked that you're all here and we want each and every one of you to be a part of the grand opening for Riverfront Park. You are going to get to take a piece of the ribbon home with you today. We have staff throughout the park, all throughout this amphitheater and all around the Great Lawn that are wearing a shirt exactly like mine. They are going to come around very quickly and efficiently and pass out all of our scissors and get you ribbon as fast as possible. We will be doing a countdown for the ribbon cutting and before, and before we pass out scissors, I do want to make sure that the following groups report back to the stage after the ribbon cutting is over for some professional group photos. City Council, Miamisburg Community Foundation, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Parks and Recreation staff, and the design team. Parks and Recreation staff, if you could please pass out the scissors and ribbon I will watch and when we're ready, we will do the countdown. Go right ahead.
time has come, I will do a countdown. We are we are going to do Parks and Recreation staff, do we have any more ribbon? It appears we are out of ribbon and the scissors, so please scooch in with your neighbors and see if you can be a part of it. We would love for you to be. We are amazed at the turnout and we are so happy so many of you are here tonight. All right, we are going to do a countdown from five and then cut the ribbon. Are we ready? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one.